More athletes exercising anti-war views. Welcome to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with a look at some of the ways that we are winning in solutions-oriented stories. It's our 35th episode of Good News Next Week, and this is for the week of October 3rd, 2016. We've got that story plus jailing U.S. officials, but first, fire it up. Having watched states like Colorado and California generate billions of dollars from marijuana, Jamaica has decided to embrace its herbaceous brand. Rather than arresting and shunning the country's Rasta population, the Jamaica authorities are going to try and leverage it. Beyond decriminalizing the possession of small amounts of marijuana last year, Jamaica has legalized the use of medical marijuana with its ultimate sights set on wellness tourism and the font of money it could bring. And for good reason, Jamaica has one of the lowest economic growth rates in the developed world, developing world rather, and striking contrast to the global success its citizens have enjoyed in the worlds of sports and music. So having done just about everything experts say a stupendously indebted nation should do, Sticking to austere financial plans, adopting prudent macroeconomic policies, and creating a friendly climate for outside investors, Jamaica's adding marijuana to its arsenal. The New World Order has brought together an odd assortment of characters. Those words coming from the New York Times, as they note, Jamaica didn't always have legal marijuana. They just decriminalized a little bit last year, and they're slowly embracing the herb. Now, it's interesting what they imply there with a, a striking contrast to the global success its citizens have enjoyed in the worlds of sports and music, implying that they haven't actually gone back to help their town and their other area. And, of course, extra bonus points New York Times for using the phrase New World Order. We have noted many, many times here in many, many ways and will continue to do so that growing more pot is pretty much the key to solving a ton of problems. And fortunately, and this is what the good news is, it's already out of the tube, and they're not going to be able to stop it. The criminal, illegal, horrendous drug war is crashing and coming to an end. It's just going to sort out of who's going to get what. Now, of course, as always, we will include links to everything we say and play in the show notes for these episodes, so you can go and do more research for yourself and look out the situation in Jamaica and elsewhere. Of course, unfortunately, and this is the biggest sticking point for me as well, the same people who got to lord over the prohibition now get to flip a switch and lord over its exploitation. But again, the bonus is they can't patent it yet. And everybody's got the seeds, and we've all got the seeds, and they're not really going to be able to stop it. If you like that, you can use that as an analogy for lots of other ways. You don't have to smoke pot to know about the massive benefits of cannabis. You know, just ask your great-grandpa about the parachutes that they used to jump out in World War II, or maybe rope, or maybe to power a car, or maybe to make food, or all of those things that's done with industrial hemp. I'll get off my soapbox here as we hit our cover story this week with not something we would usually talk about here, and that's because we call it sports ball. New York Knicks center Joe Kim Noah said last Friday he chose to miss a team dinner at the West Point Military Academy because he's anti-war. The Knicks, and he is a brand new draftee there, he used to play for the Chicago Bulls. So he hasn't even actually debuted with them yet, so he's already maybe putting himself in a difficult position with a brand new brand. But the Knicks are holding a training camp at West Point and were invited to dinner in the mess hall that featured cadets and a speech by a formal colonel. You may also know former colonel as all the news analysts on your corporate media, which is about all I could find looking at YouTube for clips about the story is basically military war hawks on faux news crying about it. Noah said he wouldn't be attending because he doesn't agree with sending young men and women to fight wars around the world. He said, quote, It's hard for me a little bit. I have a lot of respect for kids who are out here fighting, but it's hard for me to understand why we have to go to war, why ca kids have to kill kids around the world. So I have mixed feelings about being here. I'm very proud of this country. I love America, but I just don't understand kids killing kids around the world. At the end of the day, I'm not anti-troops. It's just not comfortable for me to see kids going out to war and coming back having seen what they've seen, having done what they've done. It's sad for me. It's sad for me because they're just sent there for things I don't really want to get into, to be honest with you. It's hard for me. I think there's a lot of topics that definitely need to be more than addressed. I think it's kind of, I think it's very important time right now. I think it's great athletes are taking a stand, but it has to be about more than that. This country's out of control, kids killing kids, and it has nothing to do with people are talking about the anthem, but that's not the point. There are things that need to be fixed. 
Now the Anthem controversy has slowly been building up more and more, and I've used that, the opportunity to note on Twitter and on the Morning Monarchy, I stopped standing for the pledge in high school once I realized what was going on, and these were in the go-go days of Gulf War number one in the early 90s. Thought, oh, that would be it, right? We wouldn't could still be in Iraq and adding hundreds of troops, as I reported for you this morning, October 3rd, on your morning monarchy. The same thing is continuing, and I realized not standing for the pledge because I realized my rights, knew that they couldn't make me do it. The extra satisfying part is seeing the looks on the faces of your teachers and preachers and powers that shouldn't be when they try and what do you why don't you because uh, they know they can't make me stand for the pledge and that's the power of it and that as a young kid it was a very empowering thing because you can sort of see that look on their face of thing well you can't do that and i say yes yes i can do that so it's not about the pledge and hopefully you got to be in compulsory education. You're not standing for that pledge. So again, this guy's right. It is just symbolic, but it's got to get to something deeper. But not bowing down and not praising their symbols is a hell of a great way to start. And we salute the sports ball. Our final story this week on your good news next week. CIA Director John Brennan warned last Wednesday that Congress's override of a presidential veto of contested new legislation will pave the way for foreign nations hostile to the United States to detain American officials at will for alleged crimes. Brennan expressed strong opposition to Congress's override of a bill permitting American victims of the 9-11 terror attacks to sue Saudi Arabia for its alleged involvement in the plot. However, the bill, known as the Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act, or JASTA, if you're nasty, will also provide similar legal recourse to foreign nations, meaning that they could detain top U.S. officials, military leaders, and others. War Department Chief Ash Carter made a similar argument earlier that week as well, telling top lawmakers that the legislation sets the stage for foreign nations to seize U.S. assets abroad and detain troops for alleged crimes. A coalition of Iraqis has already vowed to take America to court for war crimes. So is this good news? Or is this horrible news and a horrible domino to set into motion? Could this cause the complete breakdown of America? Are our misleaders arrested for war crimes and riots break out at home? And so the white helmets have to come in and we're right back into the hands of the same criminal coteries that got us into this mess in the first place? I say we take a chance. Some of the other stories we're looking at using hashtag good news next week this week. A pretty cute story about the Brazilian fisherman who saved a penguin's life and now it pretty much lives with him and comes back to visit him for eight months out of the year. Meanwhile, via NPR, farmers are enlisting chickens and bugs to battle against pests, i.e. pesticides, and to try and not use a bunch of chemical poison. So get this idea. They plant trap crops, which attract the bugs away from your good crops. And then they got chickens to go eat those bugs that they don't want anymore. Then it's up to you what you want to do with those chickens, but sounds like the circle of life to me. And we go from that to a technological note, as our buddy Marcus Caller tweeted, this old-ass Commodore 64 is still being used to run an auto shop in Poland. We've talked a lot about the push and the rush and our new technological overlords basically forcing us into every new technology. In some ways, I think we were going to put the brakes on it. And I've talked about canceling my cell phone service and stopping this and closing down the Facebook page. And I don't know if I'm going to get more Apple gear. It's not really doing it for me. I don't know that I'm going to be able to use a Commodore 64 to run Media Monarchy, but it's a great idea that shows you you can still do the work without having the biggest, latest whiz-bang hype beast piece of slave-made garbage. Right? That's good news. If you've got good news, I'd love you to tweet it out to me. Hashtag good news next week for some of the ways that we are winning. If you're not in the social traps, you can just send me an email, james at mediamonarchy.com. And I appreciate all your support. We have been listener-supported, non-commercial, alternative media. Hey, did you see an ad before this video? Nope, and you never have, and you never will, because we are DIY media. We've been online since 9-11-05, and we have a lifelong of passion and media and of information behind that. So if you find this valuable, if it resonates with you, I'd love your support at MediaMonarchy.com slash support. PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, any number of ways that you can help us. If you can give a little, I can give a lot. 
This has been your Good News Next Week, episode 35 for the week of October 3rd, 2016. I am James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>